morning, child of God. You are blessed and highly favored. Well, this morning, you have Prophetess Noringa Sansule to share with you the word. But when we come back, we'll go straight into the word. Call your neighbor, call your friend, tell them it's loaded. You're blessed. Beloved of God, today we're going to share about our renewing of the mind. And our script today is from Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. I'll take you there. Kindly get your Bible. I'll take you there. Um, and be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Child of God, I was moved, I was led of the Spirit to share this, that you may know exactly what to do, when to do, and how to do it. You know, as we move through life, sometimes we're asking ourselves, why do we kind of have this kind of thought? You know, we try our best to, be, to have very beautiful thoughts. I know what you go through. I've also been there. But I would like to share something that is paramount, child of God. As you move through the scripture, you see that uh, Paul gets back to the brethren and says, uh, do not be conformed. What does being conformed mean? People say, do not be conformed. Yeah? What does it mean to be, no, to be conformed? Conformed uh, means to more or less uh, submit to, more or less uh, be like child of God being like yeah so um when we get to this bit it's very important for every child of god to be renewed in their mind the bible says we have the mind of christ but sometimes we ask ourselves surely i've been thinking this i've been thinking this i how is it that i have the mind of christ well child of god it is important to understand certain things don't think like a uh, generation thinks. Don't think like the world thinks. So someone will ask, how can I not think how the world thinks? Yeah? So renewing your mind comes in, with the, in the word of God. You ought to meditate on the word of God entirely. But before you go there, you have to submit yourself to the word of God. Whatever the word of God says is the truth, child of God. When we talk about transforming the mind, one may ask themselves, how exactly? Is it a process? How long will it take? Well, all that is dependent on how, how willing you are, how willing you are, how responsive you are to the word of God. With everything that you do, sometimes you're asking yourself, okay, I have read the word of God. I have read chapter by chapter upon chapter. I have prayed. I have fasted. I have tried all kinds of things. But as I told you, the first thing you ought to do is to submit yourself wholly to the word of God. When the word of God says you are blessed, it does not matter what any other person says. The word of God is. Putting to remembrance that the word of God is Jesus, in whom all things exist and consist. All things were made by him and for him, child of God. So as we move further, I would like to invite you to this word to understand certain things. Of course, there is what they call the perfect will of God. How do you get the perfect will of God? In the word of God. The word of God is the voice of God. I always tell people that when you read the word of God, you hear God ardently. Even when you don't hear clearly the audible voice of God, the clarity of hearing his voice. The Bible says that the word is sharper than any double edged sword, divides asunder the bone and the marrow, child of God. So wherever you are, let the word of God be your standard. Whenever you're in a situation, the first thing you should do is to meditate on this word. So, um, we have to understand something. Let's open our Bibles in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10. The Bible says, and have, and have put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. So question is, the image of him that created him, how are you able to get there? You ought to meditate. I want to echo it severally. 
you ought to get down and say, you know what, like how you wake up in the morning and uh, you make your timetable. I'm going to have breakfast. I'm going to have lunch. I'm going to have a break Okay, uh, before even the lunch. Then I'm going to have a, br a snack. Then I'll have my dinner. Then therefore we do after, s after dinner, like snacks. They snack a bit. How far, more, how far more do you need to read the word of God? Spend time in his presence. In the word, delight in his word, in everything you do. It's important to understand that our minds ought to be renewed after the image of Jesus. Because you see, we are made of the word, we are created of by the word, the word is Jesus Christ. That is how we're going to renew our mind. When someone says you are, you will, it won't it will never work out. You, are, you just have to in your mind to understand, hi, I'm the head and not the tail. And then you condition your spirit to respond and then you command your body to respond to the word of God. So when people tell you renew your mind, what is meditation? Is it just thinking? I always tell people in the first dimension of meditation, if you can worry, you can meditate on the word of God. Worry is on the negative, but say not worry about anything. Jesus Christ tells you that. I'm going to move further for you to get to the realities of Jesus. When Jesus Christ says he speaks as he hears his father speak, or he does as he sees his father do, what does that mean? How will your mind be renewed except you behold yourself in God? There is no shortcut, absolutely. Even if you bury your Bible under your pillow, your mind will not be renewed. You ought to study the word of God. You ought to meditate therein. There is no shortcut. When you open the Bible, Father, in Ephesians chapter 4, 23 to 24, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The Bible says, and he put on the new man. So how will that happen? By meditation. Who is that? How, how are you able to flow? How are you able to move? You have a thought life that gives glory to God. It's by meditating on the word of God. Let me give an example. When your mind is not renewed, some people wake up and the first thing they say is they are broke. And trust me, by the end of the day, you realize that those results will be there. Why? Their mind is not renewed to the word of God that says that he became poor, that we may become rich, child of God. So he, he dealt with poverty. He dealt with sickness. So I cannot wake up and say, I have headache. How can I how can I own it? I'll just say these I'll just begin to speak the word of God. The Bible says in first Peter chapter 2, verse 24 that by his stripes we were healed. So I will say, I thank you, Lord, because by the stripes of Jesus I were healed at Calvary. So we're going to go further into the word, and you have to understand something. With whatever you have to do, know that God is the author of of life and the power of life and death is in the tongue and as a man thinketh so is he also he is yeah so wherever you are understand certain things that it is important to know God now when you get further to understanding that you see you know what God has called you God has separated you the question comes in how you know, people are telling you, meditate. You think, and I tell you now, you know, if you, if you can worry, you can meditate. How do you do it? Ponder on the word of God. Get those times. Why? Let me give an example like what I've shared. And think therein. When you see things are not working, get to the word. See your situation. Merge the, get the word there. Read it. Medi believe it. Believe it, read it, and then you meditate therein. And then you begin to see yourself as God sees you. Where whatever you have to do, child of God, let it be very clear. The question is, what 
does God say about the situation? Now, if you're in the negative, what do you do? Look for the truth in the word of God. If maybe they have said, I, you, where you are, there is no, no one will ever go beyond this level. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that he will give up whole nations for you. So what is that that is too big for God? Maybe they have said, I, you have lost job after job, and you're like, you know what, I think I've failed. No, you haven't failed. Failure is not your destiny. The Bible says that he will be the heads and not the tails. If he never fails, and greater is he who is in you than one who is in the world, if he resides on the inside of you, how can you declare upon yourself that you have failed? Now, there is the problem. Now, at that point, you renew your mind in what the word of God says. I speak to one who thinks maybe they have given up in life. Maybe they have said all oh, manner of, maybe they have put on you so many tags. And those tags have dictated how you think. Well, child of God, get back to the word of God. I would say, beloved, the word of God is a love letter to you. Because God is love, all he will give you is love. Whatever he will do, his chastisement is by, is with love, because he is love. He gives you of himself, not what's not of him. Now, some people ask themselves, uh, why I've tried severally, I have tried to, I've read the word. The question is, how do you read the word of God? I, I will re-echo. The first thing you ought to guarantee is, do you believe the word of God, what the word of God says is, and do you submit yourself to that word? Will you believe him even when the world seems not to believe him? That's what I'm saying. Do not be conformed. Will you do what he wants you to do the way he wants you to do, not according to how you want things done? That is why our minds ought to be renewed. Let me give an example. When the Bible says when someone does you wrong, do good, you'll be like putting coal on your heads. Ideally, what does the world say? It's a tooth for a tooth, an eye for an eye. Revenge. The Bible says vengeance is of the Lord. Now, when you have that kind of, of word in you and you have thought there in, and you have meditated, child of God, Guess what happens when someone does something? What do you do? Do you do them good? I me, I learned a secret. When I'll get really angry, I realized, I what should I do? That's the time I'll go look for a beautiful gift, and they never knew why. Because you see, love never fails. And I'll go and look for a beautiful gift that I'd also want to keep. But I'll be like, you know what? Love never fails. And I'll give them. And as I did so, because love gives, as I did so, all these things, I got, I got, my mind was renewed. Why? 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 I believed in the word and submitted myself to the word. Some of you have kept a lot of bitterness in the heart, or you've kept someone, and then they, wherever they are, they are happy. You, you're logging up with anger, with so and so did this to me, so and so did this to me. Then they are merry making. They actually don't even have an idea that you've kept them. Today, I would like to request you to just forgive them so that you can live a light life. You can be light. You can put aside all heavy burdens. So when the Bible talks about renewing, what does that mean? Renewing after who? After the mind of Christ Jesus. Yes, we have the mind, but we ought to renew our mind. Why? There are so many interruptions. There are so many things that, but now you see, we are not of this world. We are in this world, but not of this world. That's how you talk about the grace of our Lord. Because in all these things, it is all by grace. I cannot say it's by works. I cannot say you can help yourself. Well, you can't. Even if you try to help yourself, it would not work. You need God in this renewing of the mind. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. Who is able to tell us the mind of the Father? Who is able to tell us, I, this is what the Father desires from you. This is what the Father desires from you, child of God. So sometimes you're in a place and you're asking yourself, how, what do you do? Well, when Paul talks about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, of course, he's, he's, he is there for us. For us. Even Jesus Christ talks about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. 
He's with us and he's in us to help us. Imagine if you were on your own. Well, he did not leave us. He left us the helper, the Holy Ghost. Because you see, we cannot be in line with God in our own effort. We cannot think straight in our own effort. We can't understand the same word I'm talking about in our own effort. Being transformed is by the grace of God. Even if we did it in our own energy, in our own, that's why you see when you get to a point and you say today I'm not going to think bad, guess what happens to you? You think funny. And you ask yourself, but I said I'm not going to think bad. Well, well, you made your body aware that you know what? <laughs> you can think bad. Well, now let your mind be directed to righteousness. That is why you see you ought to study the word. Show yourself approved unto God. You get back to this word and see what the word of God says. If it says that, you know what, you're his righteousness in Christ Jesus, it doesn't matter what anyone says. If it says you are blessed and highly favored, it doesn't matter what the word says. It, if it says you will give up whole nations for you, it doesn't matter what the world says. If he said that you know what, you're the head and not the tail, he, it doesn't matter what the, word of, what the world has said. Or what the world says. If it says you have divine health, it doesn't matter what the world says, child of God. With everything that you do, with everything that you hold in your heart, with everything that you have to do, I would like to request you to get back to the foundation who is the word, the word of God, Jesus, who was the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. Because in him all things exist and consist. I'll echo it again. It is important for you to sit down and meditate upon what the word of God says about you. It doesn't matter what everyone has said. Put all those things aside. And you say what? From today. Today everything is changing. From today I am going to, you know, I'm going to seek the Lord for strength to get to this word. To desire of him, to hunger of him, to get to understand his word and to get to believe his word because it's all by grace. If it was by works, then we'll just, all we have are we're just all death before God. All we have will be like, you know what, God, God, you owe me. Yeah. But guess what? It is by grace. He's there to help us. That's why we see we have the Holy Spirit. He's there to help us in this whole process because we cannot do it alone. So when the Bible says, as he is, so we are in this world, if you get to understand this word, you'll be able to live the life that God has called you into. But as I said, the question comes in, how do you get there? I will re-echo this. You have to believe the, what the word of God says. Submit yourself to the word of God. Read the, and of course, all this should be with the help of the Holy Spirit. You cannot do it on your own, whether you like it or not. You cannot. That's why people have struggled to transform on their own, and you get to see they go back to the same. It comes also with addictions. The same thing, the same story. Read the word of God. All this will be renewed. All your mind will be renewed. You're not, the only place that you, you ought to be is in God and nowhere else. The Bible says, that he's the beginning and he's the end. So with everything you have to do, go back to the God who is the beginning and who is the end of all things, not some things, of all things. Go back to that place, beloved of God. Go back to that place of understanding what the purpose of God is in your life. He has a beautiful plan for you. But many times our thought lives limit us. Like for example, one of you may be like, I want to do this kind of business. But you're in your mind, because your mind is not trained, you're like, I, that is too big for me. Who told you? God, the God you have is enough. The Bible says he will teach you how to profit. What can he do? There's nothing that God cannot do. He never fails. What is impossible with man is possible with God. So with everything that you have to do, beloved, remember this. 
remember that God loves you. So when we come back, we're going to pray, we're going to deal with addictions, we're going to deal with businesses, we're going to deal with all those aspects, we're going to deal with mind, with the mind, we're going to deal with the hunger to know the word of God. And remember, you're blessed and highly favored. Stay tuned. Now, child of God, you're there. We're going to pray. Are you struggling with any issue? Are you struggling with any sort of addiction? By the grace of God avail. All these things are going to be dealt with in the next few minutes. So humble yourself and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your children. I thank you because you are faithful. I thank you because you are just. I thank you, Lord, because you are the healer. You are the restorer of hearts. Lord, I thank you because you free your children. I decree and declare that your children are set free in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare that all bondages that have been set upon your children are broken in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against every form of addiction in the mighty name of Jesus. Christ, we have prayed and believed. Amen. You have prayed that prayer. Know that you are set free. If you have any pain in your body, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to decree healing upon your body in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for healing. I thank you because by, by, by faith they are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says by the stripes of Jesus, they were healed. We were all healed. And Lord, I decree this word into the body and I decree healing in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. We have prayed and believed. Amen and amen. And out there you want to get born again. You want to accept Jesus Christ into your life. It's very simple. Just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I give you my life and I belong to you. Father, I thank you for your son Jesus. I thank you. For, the, for a chance to get this new kind of life, internal life. I thank you because you write my name in the book of life. I thank you because you protect me and sustain me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, child of God, you have said that prayer. You are born again. You are born again. Stay blessed. You're loved of God. Stay tuned. God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored.